Leglin. I'm a ceramicist based in Cardiff. Uh, I wanted to give you a tour of the studio today and a bit more information about the uh, process, um, well, the processes of me making my work. Um, so a little bit of information for you to start with. Um, I graduated in 2012 from Cardiff Metropolitan University and I've been making ever since in my own studio. Most of my pieces are actually made from uh, broken pieces of ceramics that I collect from charity shops. Um, those broken pieces are then put into a solid block form which I can then make a mould of, uh, hence why they're so kind of higgledy-piggledy, which is obviously the, uh, <laughs> the scientific word there. Um, so yes, I will talk more about the process of making, uh, but first of all, here's a, a, a tour, I suppose, of the studio and all the little areas that I've made so far in the studio. So here's my uh, stock shelf. Um, I, <laughs> I had actually planned to get rid of this, but actually it's really handy. It was in my old studio um, to hold work. And actually the first or the top shelf there um, that's all uh, porcelain work because I started doing some work in porcelain. Um, so I'll be having a sale in the next um, few months probably actually. So then I've got my working bit there which I use for fettling. Um, so most of my work I have to fettle because there's so many uh, angles to the pieces. Um, so that's quite an important uh, process actually. I've then got my uh, other work uh, on the shelves there, which are more, more recent pieces, the angular pieces. And also um, you might spot some uh, famous artists there that I've bought pieces from um, in the last few years when I've been going to fairs. I've got my uh, packaging and stuff under there, which I'm hoping to board up at some point. My glazes, um, my various things for kilns as well. And then you can spot on the right there, that's my uh, A-level work actually, um, which is really uh, different to the work that I'm making at the moment, which was really colourful. And now all my work is, is very white and very minimal. At the bottom here is where my, I guess, all my plaster moulds. Um, so you can see there, the quite, variety, quite a variety in the sizes of moulds that I use. And then on the left are uh, some of the sketchbooks I use for um, inspiration. And then also on the right are uh, there's some of the broken pieces uh, that I use in order to make the pieces. Most of my work is inspired by cubism, but also geometric and angular uh, ceramics, sculpture, or also uh, any type of objects really. They could be paintings, I really like the idea of having uh, these really angular, linear aspects to my work. I also like working with um, old books that I find in charity shops. So I add any exhibitions or any work that's inspired me into this book. So this is a book that I've uh, been working on for a while now. Uh, so any sort of cup designs I would put in there, any pictures of previous work, any design ideas for exhibitions, uh, these would all be put into here. So I started one piece already, as you can see I've used a, a spout of a teapot as a handle um, and then I've used the bottom of a glass container, I think it was um, a sort of jar, um, quite like the contrast between the shapes here which are more classical and then the angular shapes of the glass. I have to be really careful, um, I have cut my fingers a few times on various objects. Um, and then I've also added um, this here as a texture because when I make the pieces um, they're actually you lose all of the colour and all of the detail that are on the pieces in the mould making process. So actually having a piece that has texture on it is great because you can still see elements of the past pieces. For example, this Toby jug that I've made, 
this has parts of Toby Jug in it, but it's also some parts of Wedgwood here. And there's also this handle, which is quite a good um, contrast, I feel. It's, a, it's an Ikea handle. I quite like the idea of, um, I suppose, laughing at the, the differences between what ceramics, how ceramics were perceived in the past versus now. Whereas you can buy a handle and a cup like this from Ikea for a pound, whereas actually a Toby jug could have been a lot more expensive, the same as Wedgwood. So I quite like the contrast of um, putting both together in the same piece. So that is the type of thing that I would do. I would fill in all the clay around the side and I would finish everything off and tidy it up so that there's no, um, any way that the plaster can go where it would trap itself basically. So this is a mixture of clay and water um, and you can buy them in buckets like this. So I pour this into the mould and then because the plaster is porous it then absorbs the water from the um, mixture and it creates a skin on the inside and then after about five minutes I pour that back out so the mold is basically ready to pour so I'm trying to show you here can you see there's already a skin of clay that's formed around the mold so I then pour that out into the bucket and then the little clay mold I leave that one here goes. I hold that upside down to make sure that all the remaining clay uh, comes out of the mould. And then I normally leave that then until for about half a day. So um, what I usually do is I um, make a load of moulds at the same time. So then I have a bit of a conveyor belt of moulds going at the same time. Some bigger pieces, some smaller pieces to give me a bit more um, variety. But I'll wait now about half a day for this to dry and then I'll be able to fettle it uh, later on today. This is the smallest mould with the little pelican head. And then the cup then is in here. So fettling is actually taking off the remaining clay from in between where the two mould parts were. So it's smoothing out the line there. What I normally do is I then take the handle off. Once I finished fettling, I attach the new handle. Pieces are left to dry completely and are then fired two times. The first firing is the bisque firing, then the second firing is the glaze firing before being able to sell them to the public. Thank you very much for joining me for the tour of my studio today. I hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions at all, fire them at me, I'm more than happy to answer them. Thank you.